Hello, it's April 2019 and I'm in Belgium and now I'm in Germany. And if we just get to the other side of the road, now I'm back in Belgium again. But those buildings through the trees, they're in Germany. So what on earth is going on here? And more importantly, what has it got to do with this abandoned railway line? Welcome to the borderline insanity of the Fenbar. This is the town of Monschau in western Germany. It's a gorgeous little place sitting in a valley overlooked by a 13th century castle with a perfectly preserved medieval centre full of historic half-timbered houses and quaint little shops selling traditional arts and crafts. And of course the reason we're here is absolutely nothing to do with any of that. Here's Monschau on a map. What I've come to see is one of the world's weirdest international borders. No, not that one. This one. Why is there a spaghetti-shaped bit of Belgium inside Germany? Well, there's no way I'm not going to go and investigate that. So we're going to climb out of the town a little bit and then follow this bubbling brook upwards through some woodland until the GPS on my phone tells me that the spaghetti is just over there. Looks like it's on top of this embankment. I wonder what we'll find up here. Huh. I hate to say it, but this looks an awful lot like a disused railway. What are the chances of that, eh? What we've <coughs> stumbled across here is the former route of the Fen Railway, or in German, the Fenbahn, an old railway line that used to run from Aachen in Germany to Toivierge in Luxembourg. It was built by the Germans in the 1880s to carry passengers, iron ore and coal, and it did this in a fairly serene and uneventful way for 30 years, until someone shot an Austrian and everyone decided that the best thing to do next would be to have a war. This is what Germany looked like at the start, and I don't want to spoil the ending if you haven't seen the film, but this is what it looked like afterwards. The Treaty of Versailles gave away huge tracts of land, including this bit, which went to Belgium. And yes, some of you are there already, that just happened to be the same little bit of Germany that had the Fenbahn in it. So the Fenbahn was now in Belgium, but just to complicate things, not quite all of it. The sections around Monschau and Röttgen were still in Germany. Luckily, back then, just like nowadays, everyone was pretty chilled out about international borders and it didn't really matter. Oh no, wait! Germany argued, this railway is ours. We have built it. It is in Germany. It is very logical. And Belgium turned round and said, What are you on about, mate? It starts in Belgium. It ends in Belgium. It's got Belgian trains on it. It's flipping Belgian. The dispute wasn't resolved until 1922, four years after the end of the war, when an international commission ruled that the track bed, the railway and its buildings all belonged to Belgium. So I think I've got this right. I am standing in Belgium. That's Germany. That's Germany. Uh, and that bridge that links Germany to Germany is Belgium. This had the unintended but unavoidable effect of creating five exclaves of Germany, separated from the rest of the country by the railway line. Munsterbildchen, Röttgen Forest, Rückschlag, which is literally just someone's house, Mützenich and Rietzhof. The two countries enforced customs controls at the beginning and end of the section, and passengers and goods bound for Belgian destinations were placed in special vehicles that could be temporarily locked to keep them on the train until they were safely back in Belgium again. And apart from a period in World War II when Germany briefly regained control of the whole line, that's how things stayed until the 1970s, when Belgium decided to basically stop serving the German stations which simplified things. But with passengers and freight diverting to other routes, the line began to be neglected. And by the time EU freedom of movement arrived in the 1990s and effectively removed the border problem, there was hardly any traffic left anyway. The Fenbahn was eventually shut down at the end of 2001. 
Most of the evidence of the former railway has gone now, and the route has been turned into a long-distance path for cyclists and hikers. But here at Kalter Herberg, where the line rejoins the rest of Belgium at the southern end, you'll find an old station, and the start of seven kilometres of remaining track. They don't run trains from here anymore, but entertainingly you can instead pedal your way down the line on a rail bike. It looks like a lot of fun, and I was all set to jump on one of them before being politely advised that they're quite heavy, they're quite a lot of effort, and really they're designed for groups and families. If, like me, you're neither a group nor a family, you can at least console yourself with a tremendous selection of waffles from the buffet car. Or pop back over to the German side of the road and get some schnitzel from Biggie's. After that, my stomach was almost as heavy as a rail bike, so I hopped on a bus back up the line. And if you look carefully out of the window here, you can just about not quite see the single exclaved house at Rückschlag, which remains separated from the rest of Germany because, even though the railway's been gone for nearly 20 years now, Belgium seems quite happy to keep the land. The bus dropped me back at the same place where I started the video, the old station at Röcken, where a particularly squiggly section of the border means that you can jog across two whole countries in about 15 seconds. Brings a whole new meaning to the phrase cross-country running. But whether you're here for the running or the railway history, the biking or the rail biking, or you just really like collecting text messages from phone networks welcoming you to their country, there's no place on earth quite like the Fenbarn. <laughs>